Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to another movie review. I am back here to review some movies. It's been a little while and I am here to review The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1, which of course is the penultimate uh, movie in the Hunger Games series. It's the third one and uh, the fourth one is scheduled to come out next year around the same time as this year. So we have a whole year until that one comes out. So did this movie do a good job of tiding us over until the final film? Is this good? Is this as good as Catching Fire? I love Catching Fire. I thought that was a great movie. I, I would be okay if it was as good as the first one because I liked it. So let's talk about Hunger Games Mockingjay Part Uno. The story for Mockingjay Part 1 continues where, of course, Catching Fire left off. Where Catching Fire, I'm not going to spoil it just in case, uh, it ended with a huge cliffhanger. Of, uh, just a big one. Like It was like kind of like Empire Strikes Back type uh, cliffhanger where everything seems like it went wrong. There's a whole uh, uh, freedom fighter aspect that's just like... Just thrown in there out of nowhere. Um, of course, bad. I, I don't want to spoil it, but let's just say bad things happen. Okay, don't want to spoil it too much. And here, of course, it continues that story. Uh, you follow Katniss Everdeen once again, played by Jennifer Lawrence, and you have to follow her as she tries to stop the evil Snow, played by uh, Donald Sutherland, who is the ruler of this new uh, dictatorship, pretty much, where he's like uh, sectioning off people into districts and stuff, and just. He's a bad guy. And, of course, uh, Pete is still in there. Josh Hutcherson, who is uh, kind of the love interest. And you also have Gail, played by uh, freaking Thor's brother. What's his name? Uh, something, whatever. Him. This guy. Here, I'll put, I'll put a picture of that guy. Uh, and he's also a love interest. So there's a love triangle and stuff. But, of course, this movie, I can't spoil what's really happening. Let's just say there's a lot more complex stuff than what I'm explaining. I'm not the best at telling stories. But if you're a huge fan of The Hunger Games, you probably read the books. You know what the story is here. And for the most part, the story here is very captivating. I love the whole freedom fighter aspect, like I mentioned before. That's not big... It's not a big uh, spoiler there. There is a revolution building up. You even saw that in the trailer. There's a revolution, and of course, Jennifer Lawrence is kind of like the face of the revolution, and they want to fight back against Snow and stuff. That stuff, pretty generic if you think about it, but there's a lot of stuff in here that I thought was really, really unique, and that they... They don't do much in movies where there is a where where there is like the freedom fire, the resistance against the evil corporation. Uh, here they actually show you the whole advertising uh, aspect, where actually Jennifer Lawrence has to actually act in the film and actually like make a uh, propaganda to uh, uh, pretty much build the resistance's forces and stuff. I thought that was really interesting. Uh, I also kind of actually liked. The relationship between uh, Katniss and Peeta and Gale in this way more than I did in the previous films. I thought that was probably the weakest part in Hunger Games 1. It was okay. It, it was pretty good in 2, but I think it's the best in here. You actually do kind of feel that relationship, uh, especially between Katniss and Gale, who I thought uh, Gale, uh, Gale was like barely in the movies before, and I thought he was like a kind of like a throwaway character. Here he's actually prominently in the film, and I actually, I actually liked him. I thought uh, Liam Hemsworth. There you go. Figured out his name. There are problems. One major problem, I'm going to tell you straight up, the biggest problem is the ending. This movie, all right, I don't think everything, I, I mean, I don't think there's a lot of stuff here that shouldn't have been in the film or should have been rushed through so you could have made part one and part two into one long film. I don't think that these, this movie and, well, I, I'm not sure because the second one's not out yet, so I can't say so, but this movie didn't feel unnecessary. I will say that, but the ending was so rushed, it was so weird, because they ended it off with a really good, like, moment. Not an action scene, but a really good moment where they could have ended it kind of like there and had a big cliffhanger like the last movie, which I know a lot of people would have hated, but to be honest, I think people would have liked it better uh, than this ending, where it's just like it kind of peters out, which, heh, because Peter, get it? Um, it, yeah, it really does. It's just, like, it's just like, hey, there it is, Hunger Games. It even says Hunger Games Part 1. Look forward to part two coming up real soon. There are some other problems that aren't just cliffhanger. It's just either the writing or just the situations. Like, there's one scene here about... All right, it's not about this, but uh, stuff is blowing up. Uh, there's a lot of danger. It's, it's tension-filled. But then Katniss has to go back for her sister because her sister went back for a cat. And which, which, I'm sorry, when shit is blowing up, 
you don't go back for a cat. I'm sorry. I, I know you, you might like cats, whatever, but you don't risk your life for a cat. A cat doesn't give a shit about you. All right, I'm just going to tell you right now. If you have a cat, look at him. He doesn't give a shit about you. Uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't care about you. If that cat had long legs, long arms, and could walk like us, they wouldn't go back for your ass <laughs> if you were blowing up somewhere. So don't do it. And in this movie, a whole five-minute sequence of just that, uh, I don't know. It was really lame. I thought that was lame. There's other scenes I can't really spoil, but... There, there's moments, if you think, if, if you're like me and you go into the movie and you see a scene that you're just like, oh, really? Most likely, I was going, oh, really? Also. So, there's some scenes like that, but still, there's a lot of really good action, a lot of really good special effects. Um, the action, I have to admit, they don't use it too much, obviously, but really, it was like really staged well, very, very well shot. The cinematography is great here. It's not a beautiful film. It's not supposed to look beautiful. Uh, when they get into the city where uh, the, the evil people, the evil doers are living, you know, it looks more futuristic, but for the most part, we're staying in like deserts and you know, old villages that were blown up, there's rocks everywhere, dirt everywhere and stuff. It's a very violent film, and I was very surprised to see a bunch of six and seven year olds in my theater. I mean, it's a, I know it's a young adult novel, but it's very, very violent when you see it on the screen. But uh, anyway, it's very dark, it's very, uh, it has a lot of political satire here and there. And Well, not satire, but political statements and stuff, you know what I mean. Uh, I don't really look forward, I don't look, I, I don't look into those in a movie, I just go and... Hope I have a good time. And besides the cliffhanger and a couple scenes here and there, and even some dialogue that's kind of hokey and kind of like, oh come on, you just thought you you thought of that out of the top of your head. You're just like, all right, what's this character gonna say? I, I don't know. I love you. I don't. Who cares? Just put it in there. Whatever. Just make them add a little. It doesn't matter. Uh, I still enjoyed this film. I thought it was very, very entertaining, very well paced. The acting was great. The action, when it got to it, was pretty damn good. Uh, the special effects were improved from the uh, previous films. It was very dusty, very dirty film. Cinematography was great. I really enjoyed it. The direction was great too. Good job, Francis Lawrence. Uh, I enjoyed this film. I'm going to give it a 33 out of 40. It's not my favorite Hunger Games, uh, but it is a good one. And it's a good start to a, hopefully, great finale. Uh, just wish that cliffhanger, that cliffhanger, it wasn't even a cliffhanger, that ending was better. <laughs> that really, really annoyed me. But anyway, there you go. Thank you, and of course, goodbye.